Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed uh, the holidays. Today is a rainy day outside, so it's a perfect day to film a video, and I thought we would dive into a discussion on hyperpigmentation. If you have suffered from melasma or sun damage, or even post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, you know the struggle is real, and I wanna share with you various options that you can use to help heal your skin. And in this video, I'm gonna be very broad. We're not just gonna talk about skincare. We're also gonna talk about in-office procedures, chemical peels, and even dietary supplements that you can take to help um, eliminate and improve hyperpigmentation. So if that's of interest to you, stay with me here. Uh, and also consider subscribing to my newsletter. And with that, let's get started. Hyperpigmentation can be divided into three main categories. The category of melasma, which I think everyone unanimously agrees is the most difficult to treat and people with it suffer uh, substantially because you can get these unusual blotches of dark skin anywhere on the face, on the forehead, on the cheeks. Um, and it's frequently related to hormones. So whether it's pregnancy, birth control pills, or even hormone replacement therapy. But in addition to that, heat can also worsen melasma. So saunas and sunlight and hot summer days and even hot yoga can contribute to making the melasma worse. Another type of hyperpigmentation that is really common is post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And this is much more common in skin of color. So basically any skin that naturally produces more pigment is more prone to overproduce pigment when it is traumatized. And that can be from microneedling, it can be from waxing, it can be from a, a cut or an abrasion and probably the most common cause is acne and um, people that suffer from acne can develop um, post-inflammatory hyperpigmented lesions where the acne lesions were so once the pimple is gone you're left with a dark spot which can be really annoying and the last category is for the sun lovers sun worshipers who either spent an awful lot of time in the sun and definitely under sunscreen. And this is basically chronic sun damage and th these lesions are called solar lentigos and they are actually probably the easiest to treat. Let's so, first go so into in-office treatments and specifically laser treatments. Laser treatments can be marvelous at improving hyperpigmentation and they can be effective on melasma, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, and solar lentigos. Modern laser devices are designed in such a precise and elegant way that they can really do magic for the skin. There are several laser devices that can also be used in all skin types. So with darker pigmentation, they can be safely used and remove the unwanted hyperpigmentation. The key factor here is to go to a provider who's experienced with skin of color and who is experienced with laser devices, the laser technology. And it's a perfectly reasonable question when you go for a consultation, if you're a darker pigment, to ask, are you experienced treating skin of color? because if they're not, you may not want to get the treatment there. If you do want to start off with a laser treatment, they are very effective and you'll see results really quickly. But you have to keep in mind that you will be put on a skincare regimen before the laser treatment in order to do two things. Number one, to maximize the results of the laser treatments and also to prevent worsening the hyperpigmentation. So usually patients are put on a medley of um, tretinoin and hydroquinone, usually for two to three weeks before a laser treatment. And often this is done in a series of laser treatments, depending on the device that you use. 
so let's talk about specific devices. So if you're interested, you can Google it or find a, a physician's office that actually has these specific machines. So the first device I'll mention is the Aerolace Neo Elite. This is a 650 millisecond uh, 1064 ND YAG laser, and it is safe on all skin types. Another uh, laser that's safe on all skin types is the Sinusure Elite. It's a 755 millisecond ND YAG as well. And the Clear and Brilliant um, is a 1927, nanome uh, 1927 nanometer diode laser. And it is excellent as well for treating hyperpigmentation. This laser is very superficial. The laser light really only penetrates 0.17 millimeters below the skin surface. So it's very, very superficial and it is effective with hyperpigmentation, but because it is, let's call it a baby laser, it's, it's more of a gentle laser, it requires several treatments. So don't go in, um, don't choose a clear and brilliant device and expect to see dramatic results after two sessions. This is the type of treatment where you won't have downtime, you won't have any redness or peeling. However, because it's so gentle, you need to repeat the treatment anywhere from four to six times. Now, the big sister to that is the Fraxel laser, which also has a 1927 nanometer wavelength. This is a much more powerful laser and it penetrates deeper in the skin. This one does induce downtime and this one, while it can be used in all skin types, this one is not always ideal for conditions like melasma just because it does deliver so much heat and it is such a powerful machine. And a question I had gotten from one of my subscribers was, was, what can you do to treat the forearms? And the answer is the same machines. Whether you have sun damage or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation on your face or your chest or the backs of your hands or your arms, you can get all of these areas uh, lasered with these treatments and you will see improvement. I will throw in a caveat here. I'm not a fan of IPL. I know IPL is really popular for treating hyperpigmentation and melasma. And the reason I'm not a fan of IPL is that IPL is not a laser light. It's just a regular light. So it scatters um, light rays at various wavelengths. And in my experience, what happens is patients get a remarkable improvement after the first and second laser or after the first and second treatment. And oftentimes over time, the hyperpigmentation comes back and sometimes it comes back with a vengeance. So with IPL, you just really have to be careful. Also, again, you have to make sure you go to a very experienced um, laser technologist or physician because uh, burns are very common with IPL. So it, it still needs to be respected as, a, as an energy device. Let's also mention the role of an esthetician. Estheticians can play a critical role in the improvement of melasma, but just as I mentioned with laser, it's very important in this situation also to find a good esthetician. They're not a dime a dozen. A good estheticians are worth their weight in gold. So if you can find someone, I think word of mouth is a good way um, of finding someone. You can use Instagram if you see incredible pre and post um, pictures, you can have some confidence and you can also talk to them and ask them what types of chemical peels do you do? What types of, you know, do you do hydrofacials? Do you do chemical peels? What depth of chemical peels do you do? And you get a little bit of an idea of their extent of expertise and whether or not you'd like to have them be your partner in crime for battling hyperpigmentation. But there are peels that can help with hyperpigmentation. I will say that with peels, slow and steady wins the race. You don't, you really don't want to piss off melasma and in general hyperpigmentation can get so much worse if it's irritated. So going steady and gently and slowly will usually get you the result that you're looking for. There is one specific peel I want to mention called the Cosmolon peel, which is 
designed for hyperpigmentation. And this peel inhibits tyrosinase, which is an enzyme in the, um, in the pathway for producing a melanin. So it inhibits this enzyme. And some of the ingredients in the Cosmolan peel are ingredients that I will mention later when we're talking about skincare but some of them include azelaic acid, kojic acid, phytic acid, ascorbic acid, arbutin, and titanium dioxide. The Cosmolan peel comes in various strengths, so you can get a more potent one if you incorporate hydroquinone and retin-A to the peel. So again, you really need um, to find someone that knows what they're doing to be able to do this peel for you safely. And this peel is a nice segue into skincare ingredients. So the first ingredient I will mention, which I would say for skincare is the most effective and potent is, you probably guessed it, hydroquinone. This is a controversial ingredient and I'm actually making another video just going in depth into hydroquinone and the controversy to help you understand why some people say it's toxic and others other people say it's safe. So we'll leave that for another video, but it is definitely effective at improving hyperpigmentation. It's generally, um, most people prescribe it at a 4% strength, which you really don't need more than that. So at 4%, you will significantly improve the hyperpigmentation. And if you combine it with uh, tretinoin, it acts, it, they act synergistically so you get even better results. But if hydroquinone is not for you and you want to leave that to the side, another great ingredient, which I also just mentioned, is tretinoin. Uh, it's a vitamin A derivative, which really helps um, diminish hyperpigmentation, not only because um, it it speeds up the cell turnover, so you're sloughing off more of the dead pigmented cells, but it actually helps regulate the skin so it behaves in a more healthy and youthful way, and by that you diminish the hyperpigmentation. Other ingredients, which I've also mentioned that you can look for in skincare products, Azelaic acid is fantastic for improving hyperpigmentation. Kojic acid is another great ingredient. Vitamin C, I would, vitamin C is very popular as a brightening serum, but actually if I was working with hyperpigmentation, it, I would incorporate it, but it would not be at the top of my list. So don't search out vitamin C. Um, consider these other ingredients that really are targeting that tyrosine, um, tyrosinase enzyme. I did mention hydroquinone, but I forgot to say another ingredient you can consider is arbutin, but you have to keep in mind arbutin converts to hydroquinone. So if you don't want to use hydroquinone, you could consider arbutin. And if you don't want any hydroquinone product, product then also avoid the arbutin because it will turn into hydroquinone. Another great ingredient is niacinamide. Now there's a caveat to niacinamide um, and I have a video on niacinamide. If you're interested, I'll link it down below. But niacinamide actually helps reduce hyperpigmentation, but it's critical that it's used at the proper concentration, which will be less than 10% and ideally less than 5%. And the reason for that is when niacinamide is applied in higher concentrations, it's actually irritating to the skin. And when you irritate the skin, you increase hyperpigmentation. So it could be counteractive if used in a high concentration. Another great ingredient is tranexamic acid. And what this does is it, inhibit, it inhibits or it blocks the melanocyte stimulating factors. So the melanocytes don't get stimulated to produce more pigment. And then there are other um, extracts like licorice root and various uh, botanical extracts that also help with hyperpigmentation. But the ones I've mentioned are really the powerhouses for hyperpigmentation. If you're really serious and you're looking for ingredients that are gonna be really effective, then I would consider uh, from the list that we just discussed. And I will leave it here so that you can take a quick snapshot or review it if you wish.
One other ingredient that I would like to mention is in the category of alpha hydroxy acids. And the reason I mention this one is if you remember alpha hydroxy acids, they break up the glue that keep, keeps the outer dead skin cell layer together sitting on your skin. And if you imagine that, that stratum corneum, all those dead skin cells layering are hyperpigmented, then when the eye looks at the skin, it looks quite dark. So if you release these dead skin cells and slough them off, then you have less of the pigment that's sitting on top of the skin and the skin looks brighter. So as you're using the active ingredients we just discussed and you're decreasing the production of the melanin that is going to brighten up those deeper layers of the fresh new skin being formed. And if you add an alpha hydroxy acid, that's going to strip away that dead skin cell layer where the dark pigment is, is stuck in the dead cells and you'll eliminate that. And so the fresh skin with less pigmentation is going to come through. So it's sort of coming at it from two different ways. The active ingredients we talk about, they go inside the skin and they inhibit the enzymes and they decrease the production of melanin and the alpha hydroxy acids come in at the from the top of the skin and they slough off the top dead cell layers and you expose the nice fresh skin with a more appropriate amount of melanin. And of course, you know, I have to mention sunscreen and I have many videos on excellent mineral based sunscreens if you're interested. And again, I'll put some of them in the description below, but sunscreen is critical for hyperpigmentation because whether it's post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or melasma or solar lentigos, they all will get worse when exposed to the sun. So wearing hats, staying in the shade and sunscreen are absolutely critical. It's also worth mentioning that all of the active ingredients we mentioned, they will diminish the production of melanin and to produce that more even skin tone. However, when you stop using a lot of these ingredients and you're irritating the skin, whether with heat or with the sun or new trauma like acne, for example, that hyperpigmentation will come back. So in a sense, it's kind of, it's, it's a long-term battle to keep it under control and the sun will always aggravate it. So sunscreen is really, really important. And for completion, let's talk about supplements and foods that you can take. And let's start off with HelioCare. This is a fantastic, very potent antioxidant, which is taken as a supplement. And it is the extract of a fern called Polypodium leucotomus. And this helps repair DNA and it can be thought of as an internal sunscreen. Other ingredients you might wanna incorporate or you may already incorporate into your diet would include omega fats, healthy fats, avocados, olive oil, and these help strengthen your skin barrier because if you remember, the skin barrier is made up of cholesterol, which is a fat, triglycerides, which are fat, and ceramides. Another ingredient, niacinamide, helps build ceramides, helps increase the synthesis of ceramides. So that's, it's a, and niacinamide is a vitamin B3 um, derivative. So you could take that by mouth or you could um, put it on your skin topically. I would love to know if you, if your heart identifies with this video, if you've suffered or do suffer from hyperpigmentation and what methods you tried to help reduce it and how effective they were, uh, leave me a comment down below and I will see you guys in my next video. I wish you a wonderful new year and all the best in 2022.